Hello everyone, Chris Geyer here with Storage Point. Today we're going to talk about EBS and RBS. Now we get lots of questions from the SharePoint community, customers and partners about when to use EBS and why should I use RBS and what's the difference and all kinds of stuff along those lines. So hopefully this video will help dispel some of those myths and educate everyone a little bit about the, the different pieces. Well first of all, let's go into how do you remote blobs anyway. The first method is SharePoint EBS. Now EBS is actually an interface exposed by SharePoint itself. It was introduced with WSS3 post Service Pack 1. It's supported currently in 2007 as well as 2010, but the interface is deprecated, so moving forward it won't be available in the next wave. The interface itself is COM based and it's implemented as a farm wide feature and that will become a little bit more apparent moving forward as you see how it's exposed in storage point itself. And by itself the interface does not provide for any orphan blob garbage collection meaning once there's an orphaned blob out there there's nothing that routinely goes and cleans that up. The next piece is SQL RBS. Now as you can see just in the title of, of those two pieces, RBS is actually exposed through SQL itself and it's supported only in SharePoint 2010 so you can't use it inside of uh, 2007. Now different from EBS, RBS is a well documented .NET interface and keep in mind that this is an interface so it's a set of APIs built on a provider model that you can use to code against those APIs and write your own provider. It's implemented as a content database scoped feature different from the farm wide scoped feature and that will become apparent once again as we demonstrate how these things are surfaced inside of SharePoint. There is the concept of orphan blob collection inside of RBS uh, but it's a single threaded piece and it's not all that configurable so but it's just important to know that that is there. So one additional piece that is a remoting of blobs but really doesn't fall into the category of EBS or RBS rather this is more of an archiving piece of functionality. So there's a lot of, of vendors out there that are more legacy in nature that do remote your blobs but they do so in a non-active way. What will happen with EBS and RBS is those blobs get remoted and are never touched the database. So when you upload them they never actually get placed into the database itself. They are placed outside the database from the get-go. Whereas there are other ones out there that wait for them to get to the database and then pull them out and place them elsewhere. These don't use EBS or RBS but are considered somewhat remoting of your blobs. Now these are unsupported because they don't use these APIs and they break a lot of the out-of-box features such as search, etc. So keep that in mind as, as you're evaluating your remoting options and what you want to do to, to achieve this type of functionality. In the previous slide, I spoke of the idea that RBS is based on a provider model. You can use the RBS API to create your own RBS provider, which is obviously what Storage Point has done. Microsoft also provides an RBS file stream provider that's free of charge and downloadable from their website. This uses the RBS API set to externalize your blobs to the local file system. Now that word local is very important in this context as all of those blobs will need to be on the same server as the SQL server. So they need to be locally attached disk. This doesn't give you the full ROI capability that you can get from remoting your blobs and being able to choose which blobs go where, what types of storage do you use, etc. It's a basic implementation of RBS. There's not a lot of management behind it. Uh, you can't do a lot of the profiles where you can say, as I said, put some here and some there. Uh, there's no visualization to reporting on, on what's happening. Uh, the timer jobs themselves uh, that go on, uh, there's, they're difficult to manage, etc. It really is a basic, basic provider. So it does have an use case. For those of you that are using 2007 standalone version and have a, a very large database and you want to upgrade to 2010 foundation, this is where remoting those blobs come in, comes in very handy. 
because if you're using the standalone version of Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 and your content databases are stored in the Windows internal database engine, which there was no size limitation on. In 2010, the content databases would be stored in SQL Server 2008 Express, and that has a maximum database size of 4 gigabytes per database. SQL Server 2008 R2 Express will support as ones as large as 10 gigabytes, so keep that in mind. But if you are a 2007 standalone version and your database is currently greater than 4 gigabytes, this remoting and RBS file stream is going to be an interesting use case for you. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at how this would work inside of Storage Point. What we have here is a basic virtual machine with SharePoint 2010 and Storage Point on it. And I want to show you what creating a profile to take advantage of RBS and EBS would look like. So if we create a new profile, and since we're going to be showing RBS, we'll call this one RBS. Uh, I said before that RBS is a content database scope. So if we select content databases, our scope, you see that we have the option to use RBS now. And I can specify a specific content database I want to apply this to. We can externalize blobs using this, and I want to select asynchronous selection mode, which will give me more options on what endpoint things get written to. If we add an endpoint, I have the local ones that I can pick from. We'll select my NAS, and one of the important pieces about that is you can see that with the storage point provider that leverages EBS, you're not limited to that local file system anymore. Rather, uh, that can be any variety of things using any of our adapters. I want to select a few advanced uh, asynchronous options here to use folder names and file names, etc. But at the same time, I want to use a hierarchy of endpoints based on some specific criteria I have. So it's not an everything in this content database goes here or everything in that content database goes there. I can get very granular and stack these on top of one another. So I'll add a scope that's going to be this one. And I want to drill in and say all of my departments go here or even get more specific by saying all of my content types go to a specific place. So for this case, we'll just say this site collection goes to uh, this specific endpoint. So we'll say the scope file system. We can keep going. We can say I want the archive file system and add another scope and say everything in my sites goes to that. And you can also do include or exclude or get even more granular by file size, file type, etc. So that's how it would look with RBS. And it's very similar in if we go and we flip over and do the same thing for EBS. So let's do that now. Going back to our initial page here, create a new profile, and we'll call this one EBS. Now I have the other options of doing web apps or site collections if I don't select the content database, where I can just go to my site collection and say, my sites. And I want to put those, we'll do asynchronous here as well. We'll add that endpoint and say archive. We'll do the same selection. And you can see we'll do that same selection. And we don't need to get any more granular than that, but I can with file size, file type, etc. And you can see it's very similar. So Storage Point can take advantage of EBS or RBS or both at the same time, and you can set up a slew of scopes that will be applicable to your environment.